Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my Orca Slicer video. I apologize for my voice, I'm, I'm still a little bit sick, but um, I did want to make this small video going over Orca, Orca Slicer, that type of thing. I think it's a very, really phenomenal slicer and I am switching from Cura over to the slicer. I've got a lot to learn on it still, but Hopefully I'll make more and more videos, you know, as time progresses on um, things that I, or workflows that I might find out while using this slicer, but it's definitely replaced Cura for me so far. I have been a huge fan of Cura ever since I started printing um, over 10 years ago, and I finally think I found a slicer that switched, has basically pulled me away from Cura. Part of that is because of my Bamboo Lab uh, X1 Carbon. I've uh, really enjoyed using that slicer, the bamboo slicer, over the past year. And Orca Slicer is just basically the, the next step in that. Um, it's a more um, usable slicer for all printers versus the more kind of direct bamboo slicer that's mainly for the uh, bamboo labs. I do believe in Bamboo Studio you can add um, other printers and that type of thing, but Orca Slicer generally has some more features and it's kind of just a more wide range of printers are uh, available and there's lots of profiles already in Orca Slicer. So to download Orca Slicer, you're going to just go to Orca Slicer's GitHub into the release section and you're going to grab the latest version here under assets. So I have the uh, Win64 version installed. There is no installation like an exe or an install, you're just gonna extract the zip file and you're gonna run Orca Slicer. Very straightforward, very easy to use. So that's how to install it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to Orca. All right, once you've extracted your Orca zip file and you've launched Orca, you're gonna have like a welcome screen essentially and that's gonna ask you to um, do a couple things, kind of getting started type of thing. And then you're going to eventually be presented with a printer selection screen like this. So we can actually set up a custom printer, a custom clipper printer. We can set up a custom Marlin printer if we want to. There are also a lot of printers in here by default already set up with profiles, which is really awesome. So we got like artillery, anacubic, um, bamboo, BQ. Um, Creality for whatever reason, I don't know I'd be using one of those printers, but uh, I'm joking of course, but uh, Elgu, we have FL Sun Deltas in here. I definitely used my FL Sun uh, Super Racer. I just built a profile off of like a V400 profile. It's Folger Tech printers in here. Everything, Prusa, Rat Rigs in here, Voron of course is in here, and it seems like they're adding more and more um, printers in here. Hopefully we'll eventually have some rooks in here. That'll be really awesome. So Yeah, you come in here choose your printer and your nozzle size and you'll go ahead and click confirm and it'll Put the printer in for you So we'll create a default printer profile here a filament profile and an actual uh, process section here for you so I have my fortress here that I've been customizing so this is a custom clipper uh, printer that I've set up. So at the top here we have our printer and we can go ahead and go ahead and edit the presets for that printer. So I'm going to run through kind of the main things I touch when I set up a printer and the things that I ignore. Your printer or your situation might be different but this will help you get started with Orca. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our build area or our printable area. So we're gonna come in here and go set. I've set my fortress to 165 by 165 and then also my height. It's already set to clipper and generally I won't touch anything else in the basic information portion of that. So very straightforward. We're just setting up our build area. Machine G code, this is already in here by default. So we have a print start and a print end section. And I find this works really well with clipper. So again, I'll talk about a print start macro near the end of the video, as well as a print end. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to have a print start and print end macro set up. 
it's just easier to use uh, use it with Orca Slicer and they're very simple. Like I say, I'll show you mine here at the end. Motion ability, this is the defaults. I have not touched this. This is kind of the general maximums of your printer. Um, if you want to be safe, you can dial these in, but generally it's okay to keep them like this for now. You might want to increase some of these values if you're printing super fast or you're printing over 20,000 acceleration, that type of thing. The next real mo most important tab is extruder. So this is where you're gonna set up the retraction free extruder, retraction speed, Z hop, that type of thing. Again, I'll generally come in here and I'm just changing my retraction length, my retraction speed, and then I might play around with Z hop a little bit. Orca does have a lot of advanced types of Z hop, which also help with different types of stringing problems and things like that. So definitely check that out. By default, it's set to normal and that's essentially it for setting up a actual, the printer settings, the physical printer settings. There's not much else in here that I change. If you'll notice here, we also have a little Wi-Fi connection here, which is really cool. Orca has built-in support to connect to Clipper. So again, Cura can do this, but you need to plug in and all that kind of stuff. It's just in here by default. You put in your IP address and we'll show more functionality on that in a little bit. So really nice to have that built in there. And then we're gonna set up a filament profile. So we already have a basic one that it gives you. I've just named mine PLA Fortress. And again, we're gonna come in here and go through some basics. Generally, I will just come in here and I'll set up my temps for my filament. So I generally print a hot first layer and then I'll go to down to 195 for the rest of the layers and then my bed. Volumetric flow set by default in Orca to 12. You can increase that, of course, but 12 millimeters uh, cubed is great for most printers. You can also dial in your flow ratio here, which is very, very important when dialing in tolerances and stuff for your prints. A lot of people don't dial in the flow for their actual um, materials. So, for instance, PLA generally likes to print around 0 0.98, 0 0.97 for a lot of different PLAs. Uh, you almost will never print PLA at one flow or 100% flow. ABS is even lower. So that's another setting in here I might come in and tweak, but 0.98 is a great starting point. Cooling is also in here. Your actual layer uh, cooling time is in here, which is an important setting to know about if you're looking at printing fast. So for my fortress, I'm generally printing a bit conservative because the printer's not fully assembled and I'm just doing some testing. So I have it set so that every one of my layers takes at least six seconds. You, if you're printing super fast, you might want to lower this down if you have the cooling to support it. Um, that's generally the only thing I'll come in here, but you can change a whole bunch of different things like maybe your fans only want to turn on at 50% for the first three layers and then they'll go up to 100% or your fan will vary its uh, percentage based on what it's printing. A lot of di different functionality and it's all found on one small tab here that's very, very easy to go through. Settings overrides, I never mess with this usually. Um, you can override some of your actual printer parameters based on your filament. So TPU for instance, you might want TPU a different retraction length or stuff like that. So you might come in here and actually dial this in to override some of your extruder settings and printer settings from the previous um, options. Advanced, um, I, I don't do anything in here. You can have a separate G code for the filaments that you're actually running. So again, very straightforward. I am of course always in advanced mode. So we have all the options and I find Orca really organizes these very nicely into their individual tabs and it's not overwhelming I find. So filament settings. The next thing we're going through here is our process. And this is another UI setting that I think Orca does way better than any other slicer. Again, we are on advanced. So this is every single setting we can possibly imagine. And these tabs are not very big. There's five tabs and they don't have like all this information spread out all over the place. I find everything is very logical and very easy to find. So for quality, in here our layer height is under quality, our line width, and 
there's some ironing and wall generation and some things like that. For most people, they're going to come in here and just set their layer height and maybe line width. Seams are already very good in Orca Slicer right out of the box. I find you don't generally have to mess around with these. Strength, pretty obvious stuff in here are, are how many walls we're doing, how many top and bottom layers, and what our infill is set to. Orca obviously has pretty much every type of infill you can imagine. A lot of really awesome ones in here. And we also have like some more advanced settings here like infill wall gap and all that kind of stuff. Again, I generally don't mess with those. I'll come in here, set up my, my uh, number of walls, top and bottom layers and infill. Speed. Again, straightforward. We have our speed settings here that you would normally find as well as acceleration. So this is another tip for anyone out there. You can actually slice your printed parts and you can set up their acceleration speed based on the features that's being printed. So a lot of times I'll always get asked like what acceleration are you printing that file in or what, print, what acceleration is that printer running at? It's a very difficult question and answer because a well-tuned 3D printer, a modern 3D printer, is going to have different accelerations for different features that it's printing. So like we see here, I might be printing at 7500 acceleration for most features, but my outside walls, I might want only 3000 acceleration. And a lot of times that's because if I'm running Input Shaper, I don't want to round off all my features on the exterior. I still want a really, really fast print, but I don't want all my edges rounded off and I don't want to lose detail. So this is something that I really recommend um, everyone looks into and customizes for their actual printer is finding out how fast it likes to print certain features. And for the most part, we can print our inside walls and our infill very quickly. You're not gonna see that. You can print them as fast as your printer can handle them and then just slow down for that one outer layer line, which will save a lot of time in prints and make your prints look really, really great. So again, speed's really nice and that's kind of a tip there for acceleration. We can set dynamic acceleration for our printer right through here. Same thing with our jerk settings. We can actually set that and define that here as well. I don't play around with that much, but when you get into speed benches and things like that, you might want to dial that in a little bit too. Supports, um, Orca Slicer has very advanced supports in it and the supports do work very, very well. So they have your uh, normal kind of supports, tree supports are in here. Lots of modern features in this printer, uh, in this slicer by default, which is really, really great. Um, we also do have some Z distance and, and some more advanced kind of stuff here. Uh, what patterns you're printing in for supports and that type of thing. So again, very straightforward, all your support settings in there. Other, this is where we have stuff like how many skirts. I usually print with some skirts on my prints. We can do uh, prime towers in here and that type of thing. Your vase mode and stuff's in here and that type of thing. Same thing with exclude object features like Clipper supports, uh, there's a plugin for excluding objects. So if you were printing two items, you could actually exclude one of those items if it failed and the other item was printing fine. It won't ruin your whole print. It's very useful if you're printing an entire bed of parts and maybe one print failed or one object failed, you can exclude that. So that'll turn that feature on and you can go into your Clipper interface and actually turn off parts as you're printing. It's a really neat functionality. And again, it just shows how modern something like Orca Slicer is. And that's a really quick overview of the left-hand side on, on actually setting up a profile. Again, Orca really has, and, and Bamboo as well, this is one of the biggest things I like about the Slicer. It's not overcomplicated. It's very easy to find the setting you're looking for, and it's very easy to dial in your settings in Orca. So that's really, really nice. So another uh, options here, if we go in and add, uh, let's add a Rolo Cube, of course, in here. And there's just some really, really um, nice quality of life stuff. I much prefer the um, rotate on face or lay on face feature on Orca. 
I find the Cura version is not very easy to use. It doesn't highlight faces like this. So it's very hard for you to flip your, your print or whatever that you might want to orient it in a different direction or whatnot. Again, super easy. I find it way better than Cura. Another really awesome feature of this is, of course, support painting. This should be in pretty much any slicer. It's really, really easy to use in Orca. You can do actual like drawing um, support. So we can come in here and we can draw in supports if you want to, to support that corner or whatever. You can even come in here and do like a fill based on surface. So we can come in here and we can fill that in. And if we slice this and I turn on supports, we can see that it'll generate supports. Well, this is again a really terrible model, but you can kind of see here it generated supports on the, the bottom corner here. Um, we can also go into our model and we can actually block supports, which is really helpful. We can come in here and say, I don't want supports here. You know, I don't want supports in this X and all that kind of stuff, whatnot. I don't want to support these things. It's, it's really, really powerful what you can do with supports in this slicer. And you can see here, we eliminated all the supports on these features and that type of thing. So again, a feature every slicer should have and Cura doesn't have that functionality. So again, another reason why I've really grown to like Bamboo Slicer and using my X1 Carbon, and this is just the natural next step, is having a, a slicer I can use for all my printers, not just my Bamboo printer. So that's really nice there. A lot of interesting features. Of course, this supports the multicolor options that the Bamboo Studio would support. So that's really nice as well. Another really awesome feature is the calibration, uh, built-in calibration tools in Orca. So we can actually do a temperature tower really, really easy. Our start and end temp, we click OK, and it will actually generate a temp tower for us built in. Again, I know you can do this kind of stuff in Cura, but you need to add third-party plugins, and it's janky to make work and that kind of stuff. It's just baked right into the slicer. There's flow rate, another, like I talked about, your flow rate is very important to dial in for PLA and ABS. So you can actually go in here and set up a flow rate test. So you can actually fine tune your flow rate, which is you should do on any printer and any filament. You can actually go in here and we can dial in pressure advance. Another uh, functionality that you want to actually dial in to get nice clean prints so we can do a pressure advance cube or, or whatever here and dial that in. It also um, has retraction tests and, and that type of thing. Same thing with flow rate. It's really really easy to test out hot ends with Orca Slicer. So doing max flow rates you can set what flow rate you're going to start at and what you're going to end at and it will generate a really awesome flow rate test. Um, for your actual printer, which is really, really cool. I really like that feature. And there's also a really good tutorial. If you click on tutorial, it'll pop open um, a window here of all of the calibration tests and explain on how they work and how to use them. It's really, really well done. So again, that's all functionality that's just baked in and why this is um, replacing Cura for me. Another really awesome feature, like we talked about before was we talked about our Wi-Fi or our network connection. This will actually upload parts directly to um, Clipper for us, right from the slicer. So once we're done actually um, generating a part, so let's say we're doing a calibration, let's say I'm doing a temperature tower or whatever file that I'm printing. So we'll come in here, we'll generate our temperature tower. I can slice this and then I can actually send it to my printer directly from my slicer. Now, Cura can do this with a third-party plugin. It's janky, again, it's just built right into the slicer here. So I can click Upload, and it will automatically upload this to Fortress for me. Another really great option is I can see my Clipper interface right from Orca. If I click on Device, here is Clipper. And here is the actual file I just uploaded. This saves so many steps in your workflow to printing. You can bring a model into your slicer, click slice, and click upload and print. You're done. 
There's no fumbling with SD cards. There's no downloading it and then uploading it to Clipper. It's all seamless and it saves so much time. As well as having thumbnails baked in to your actual Clipper instance, it's really, really awesome. So I'm gonna show you my print and start and macro like I talked about earlier. So I have these just set up in my printer config and they are again as straightforward as possible for this printer, my Fortress printer here. So I have a G-code macro called print start and all it's doing is it's homing first. That's the only functionality that this does. Secondly, my print end, uh, it homes at the end of a print and it turns off the heaters. You can also do uh, M84 in here as well to turn off the motors if, if you want. Clipper will turn the motors off or automatically after a set amount of time, but that's all you really need. You can customize this much more later on, like uh, having your bed heat up first and then do like your um, three-point tramming if you have a trident and then heat up your nozzle. You can do nozzle wiping and all sorts of advanced functionality. If you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, I think there's some more information on Ellis's tuning guide on print start and end back rows and stuff like that. Or take a look at a trident um, print start and end macro. I'm sure there's a lot of examples out there that you could take a look at. So again, it to me, it's just a real no brainer to use this for Clipper printers. And it's a, such a useful tool. It's got way more features than Kira does. The interface is better than Super Slicer and Prusa Slicer in my opinion. And it's 100% replaced Kira for me. I don't really see myself going back um, Cura to me right now, it's got some bugs in it with seams and things like that. And it's just, it's lagging behind in functionality. I know the newest version of Cura, they're talking about trying to get more support to integrate it with Clipper and modern firmware. And hopefully they do catch up. But right now, um, Cura is really getting in, in the DIY community, it's really getting replaced by um, more modern slicers like this. So Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I will put the link in the description to download Orca. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon or check out my Money Factory and support that way. And thanks again, everyone, and I'll catch you next time.